subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel and press the bell icon to get latest updates. In previous video, I have discussed about the diffraction grating and the intensity distribution pattern for it. If you have not watched my previous video, then please click above mentioned link or go to the playlist. In continuation with the previous topic, in this video, I am going to discuss about the relics criterion of resolution and resolving power of a grating. Now let's see what is relics criterion. Let us consider two wavelengths and the difference in wavelengths is smaller and close to each other as shown in this figure. Then the resultant intensity curve is shown in this figure. They are said to be well separated. As shown in this diagram, the first waveform with the wavelength lambda 1 and second waveform with the wavelength lambda 2 they are well separated from each other and we cannot see any overlapping between these two waves that is lambda 1 and lambda 2 and the corresponding intensity distribution pattern is shown here now let's see what is release criterion of resolution the statement it states that the two sources are resolvable by an optical instrument when the central maxima of one diffraction pattern falls over the first minima of the other diffraction pattern and vice versa. Now let us consider the resolution of two wavelengths by a grating. When the difference in wavelengths is smaller such that the central maximum of the wavelength coincides with the first minima of the other as shown in this diagram, then the resultant intensity curve as shown here, the curve shows a distinct dip in the middle of two central maxima here. Therefore, the two wavelengths can be distinguished from one another and according to the Rayleigh's criterion, they are said to be just resolved. If the difference in wavelengths is such that their principal maxima are separately visible, then there is a distinct point of zero intensity in between these two wavelengths. The principal maxima of lambda 1 lies on the first minima of lambda 2 and vice versa as shown here in this diagram. Hence, according to Rayleigh's criterion, they are said to be just resolved. The corresponding intensity distribution pattern is shown here in this diagram. Such condition is called as a Rayleigh's criterion of resolution. Now let's see another condition. When the difference in wavelengths is so small that the central maxima corresponding to two wavelengths come still closer as shown in this diagram, then the resultant intensity curve is quite smooth without any dip. So here the dip is very very small. This curve is as if there is only one wavelength somewhat bigger and uh, stronger. Hence, according to Rayleigh's criterion, the two wavelengths are not resolved and the corresponding intensity distribution pattern is shown in this picture. Now let's see what is resolving power. The capacity of an optical instrument to show separate images of very closely placed two objects is called as a resolving power. The resolving power of a diffraction grating is defined as its ability to form separate diffraction maxima of two closely separated wavelengths. Let's say in this diagram, AB represent the surface of a plane transmission grating which having grating element A plus B 
and capital N is a total number of the slits. Here, small a is a length of opaque area and small b is a length of slit. So, the distance a plus b, that is a plus b total, is called as a grating element of that grating. Now, let's consider that a beam of light having two wavelengths, lambda and lambda plus d lambda is normally incident on the grating. So, let's P1 is a nth primary maximum of a spectral line of wavelength lambda at an angle of diffraction theta and P2 is the nth primary maximum of wavelength lambda plus d lambda at diffracting angle theta plus d theta. Therefore, according to Rayleigh's criterion, the two wavelengths will be resolved if the principal maxima that is lambda plus d lambda of nth order in a direction theta plus d theta falls over the first minimum of nth order in the same direction theta plus d theta. Therefore, the principal maximum of lambda in the theta direction is given by in bracket a plus b bracket complete sine of theta is equal to n lambda. Let's say this is equation number 1. Equation 1 is the equation for the single slit but in diffraction grating there are n number of slits. Hence equation number 1 can be written as the equation of minima is capital N a plus b sine of theta is equal to m lambda where small m takes all integer except 0 n 2 n small n into capital N because of these values of small m the condition for maxima is satisfied thus first minimum adjacent to the nth principal maximum in the direction of theta plus d theta can be obtained by substituting the value of small m as a n small n into capital N plus 1. Therefore, the first minimum in the direction of theta plus d theta is given by capital N in bracket small a plus b bracket complete sin of theta plus d theta is equal to in bracket small n into capital N plus 1 bracket complete. Therefore, this equation we can write a plus b sin of theta plus d theta is equal to small n plus 1 upon capital N bracket complete into lambda. Let's say this is equation number 2. Therefore, the principal maxima of lambda plus d lambda in the direction of theta plus d theta is given by in bracket small a plus small b bracket complete sin of theta plus d theta is equal to small n in bracket lambda plus d lambda bracket complete. Let's say this is equation number 3. Therefore, from equation number 2 and from equation number 3, we can write in bracket small n plus 1 upon capital N bracket complete into lambda is equal to small n in bracket lambda plus d lambda. Therefore, after simplification, this equation can be written as small n into lambda plus lambda upon capital N is equal to small n lambda plus small n d lambda. Therefore, we can write lambda upon capital N is equal to small n d lambda. So, rearranging this equation, we can write lambda upon d lambda is equal to small n into capital N. Let's say this is equation number 4. So, this equation number 4 is nothing but the resolving power that is Rp is equal to lambda upon d lambda is equal to small n into capital N. Thus, the resolving power is directly proportional to the two components. Number 1, the order of the spectrum that is small n and the total number of lines on the grating that is capital N.
So this is all about the release criterion for the resolution and the resolving power of a grating. In my next video lecture, I will explain the next topic that is polarization in which I will discuss about polarization of light. What is this polarization phenomena? Then Mahler's law, then double refraction, you know, Huygens theory of double refraction and the applications of polarization. So don't miss my next video. Thank you. Below this video in the description, the link of important information related to this video is given. Please go through it. Please like and share this video and subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel to get the notifications about my upcoming videos. Thank you.